Kim has made two visits to meet XI since March, while a high-level delegation from his ruling Workers' Party toured China's industrial hubs in an 11-day visit in May that focused on China's high-tech urban transport and latest scientific breakthroughs. That delegation went to China only weeks after Kim declared an end to nuclear and missile tests and vowed an all-out effort toward socialist economic construction. Chinese media labeled Kim's announcement North Korea's opening and reform, shorthand for Deng's policies, sparking a flurry of investment in housing in Dandong, the Chinese border town. Kim is talking to Trump because he needs to get the United States to back off sanctions. After that, headlines will be all about Kim and Xi Jinping, said Jian Kyungman, an economist at the Institute for Korean Integration of Society with reference to the Chinese president. China is already North Korea's most important ally and biggest trade partner. And since Kim assumed power in 2011 the trade relationship has become even more important. China now represents more than 90% of Pyongyang's trade, making it just about North Korea's only economic lifeline. China eyes North Korea's opening. Stagnating economic growth in China's northeastern Rust Belt has also spurred interest in ramping up Chinese economic ties with North Korea, according to Adam Cathcart, an expert on China-North Korea relations at Leeds University in the United Kingdom. China's model of shifting from a planned economy to a market economy is attractive for Pyongyang because it was achieved with political, economic and social stability, according to Zhang Enyuan chief economist at Dongxing Securities in Beijing. But Cathcart said that progress on economic liberalization would likely be slow because North Korea will want to be careful about the increased political risks that could come from relaxing restrictions on the currency and migration. That has hurt North Korea's coal-intensive heavy industries and manufacturing sectors. But more importantly, plunging trade with Beijing has been killing the most thriving part of the economy unofficial markets where individuals and wholesalers buy and sell mostly Chinese-made consumer goods and agricultural products, Jian said. More than anything, it was China's decision to enforce sanctions that squeezed the economy and made removing of the sanctions an urgent task for Kim, he said. Mosquito net style even after sanctions are lifted, North Korea will likely pursue state-managed growth because loosening controls is potentially destabilizing for the regime says Kim byung yeon an economics professor at Seoul National University. It could leave Kim Jong-un with less than half the power he has now. The once-in-special tourist zone in the East Coast, or the suspended inter-Korean factory park in the North's border city of Kaesong are some other examples Kim might pursue to maintain state controls over the economy, experts say. In Wonsan, Kim has already built a ski resort and a new airport to turn the city of 360,000 people into a billion-dollar tourist hotspot. These are the sorts of projects that are most likely to get underway first if the sanctions are eased, BMI Research said. Jian says this is mosquito net style reform, similar to Deng Xiaoping's model, with limited foreign investment and market liberalization contained within firm strictures of state control. Deng championed a string of special economic zones along China's east coast where unique local legislation encouraged foreign investment in manufacturing joint ventures that sold to export markets, while protecting Chinese industries from going head-to-head -head with multinationals. Deng designated Shenzhen as a special economic zone and made that sleepy fishing village to a manufacturing hub of the world, Jian said. Kim will be eager for those especially as he will want minimal changes to other parts of the economy.